you can see my screen and see me OK. Um, so my name's Leon Gordon and we're here today for an introduction to machine learning within Power BI. Obviously, it's a massive pleasure to be here um, at, at today's at today's boot camp um, and hopefully we can all look to learn a lot. So as I mentioned, uh, my name's Leon Gordon, current Microsoft uh, Data Platform MVP, and also the um, founder and operator of the Microsoft Power BI UK User Group, and also the Data DNA Dataset Visualization Group. Um, and I also um, am the head of analytics at a company called Onyx Data. So if you do want to liaise with me on any social media, uh, then all of my links are here to be followed through. Okay. So in today's session, um, we're going to look at an introduction to machine learning within Power BI. So first and foremost, we're going to understand what is machine learning. Um, then we're going to look at how we can benefit from machine learning within Power BI, how to create a machine learning model uh, in Power BI Premium or Premium per user. And then we're going to look at how to create a machine learning model in Power BI for free before going on to some resources to continue our learning. Um, with that being said, it's worthwhile knowing that this is going to be a very much a demo driven session. We do have a few slides, um, but the majority of this session will be me walking through um, how to how to create a machine learning model um, in Power BI Premium and then looking at a way that we can use um, the, do this in a free in a free version as such. OK, um, so there will be a lot of technical bits that we will skim over today in an effort to stay on time and just show you an art of what is possible. So. With that being said, let's first look at what is machine learning. So machine learning is a branch of artificial intelligence or AI that teaches computers to do what comes naturally to humans and animals. And the key here is it's to learn from experience. OK, um, machine learning algorithms use computational methods to learn directly, sorry, to learn information directly from data. Again, it's very key to point this across is that what we're looking to do with the machines in this instance is to allow them to learn information directly from the data um, without relying on a predetermined, sorry, a predetermined equation as a model. OK, so how can we benefit from machine learning within Power BI? Well, machine learning can be used in a, in a variety of different methods from real time predictions to churn analysis customer leads and conversion, and also to predict fraud. In today's session, we're going to look at a very particular um, problem. We're going to look at a fictional um, sales company within the fintech industry that's spending a lot of money on purchasing leads to then go through their sales funnel, as we can see here, um, and, and to obviously be converted into sales. Now, as we can see, this company is spending three million pounds per year on leads. Now these leads are being pulled through the sales pipeline, going through a sales call um, to then be followed up to a conversion and then onto a sale. Now with this pipeline, there's obviously going to be some leads that come through that don't turn into um, a sale and also some leads that due to the amount of leads being pulled through um, aren't even being called um, within, within a, a, a good time frame. So with that being the case, wouldn't it be amazing if we could identify um, what a potential buyer looks like? to our business and then actively make sure that we get leads that are going to are going to fit those attributes, fit those features and convert for us into um, into sales and, pur and purchases. Now, with that being said, we're going to look to create a machine learning model, um, first of all, in Power BI Premium uh, and then onto Power BI uh, and then look to do this on for free in Power BI that will allow us to identify which of these leads is more likely um, to be a buyer. So that being said, let's go right into the demo and look to see how we can use machine learning in Power BI. So I'm just going to come across to my Power BI workspace. So hopefully you can all see um, the Power BI service. And I've already got an instance set up, a premium instance, which is called Sandbox. So we're going to go over to there and in this instance, just before I go into showing you how to build out um, this machine learning model within Power BI Premium, let's just go over to um, our GitHub and take a look at the underlying data that we're going to use. So again, I will make these links readily available um, following today's session um, and all of this information is available on our GitHub. So for this, we're going to look at um, a particular CSV in this instance, which is going to be our sales training CSV. 
So I'm just going to open this up so we can take a look at the underlying data. Right, so fantastic. Within this CSV, we have a list of, um, of historic customers that have either been, as we can see in our end column here with our flag, if it was a buyer, we have a, a one, um, and if it was not a buyer, we have a zero. We also have some other attributes around these customers. So we have their age, their marital status, their gender, yearly income, total children, number of children at home, their education, their occupation, whether or not they're a house owner, uh, the number of, of cars owned, state province code, and also the postal code for these individuals. So this data here is going to form our sales, um, our machine learning model sales training data set. We're going to utilize this data as it is historic. We already have identified whether these customers previously brought with us or they didn't. And we're going to build out a machine learning model that we can look to push our leads data through. So just before we do that, let's go back to our GitHub environment and then take a look at our prospective buyer um, data. OK, so within our prospective buyer data, we have largely a lot of this, the same attributes. So we have age, marital status, agenda, yearly income, total children, number of children at home. And we also have some transactional uh, system data here. So prospective buyer key, prospective buyer alternate key, uh, the person's first and last name. And what we're going to do with this data, as you'll see here, we haven't identified whether these individuals are buyers or not. And the reason for this is this is fresh data, fresh leads that we're going to look to push through or pipe through our machine learning model to be able to understand whether they're likely to be buyers with us or not. So hopefully that that put, that paints the picture for the data we're going to use to train and also the data we're going to use um, to do our predictions on as well. So with that being said, let's head back over to our Power BI service. And to do this, we're going to utilize um, a concept which is data flows. So within the service, we're just going to go over and create a new data flow. OK, um, sometimes on this machine, the service asks me to do this twice. Maybe on your machine, it might work for the first time. OK, so we're just going to wait for this to load and then we have our nice UI to start creating our data flow. So to do this, we're going to need to define some new tables. So we're just going to go to add new tables. And then we'll get a very familiar screen um, where we're going to look to identify our, our data source. Now, as we saw on our GitHub page, we are going to be using CSVs for this process. And when we use the Power Query web service version, we're going to look to utilize text CSV as our data source. And we can just head back over to our GitHub, go back to our root directory. And if we go to our sales training CSV file first, and just wait for this to open, we can go to the raw underlying data, which gives us a nice URL that we can just copy out from there. Go back to our Power BI and we can look to file path URL and head over and hit next. OK. For those of you that are familiar um, with Power BI and also Power Query online, and by hitting next, this will just take us to our preview um, of the underlying data. OK, so we'll notice that uh, within, Power, within Power Query it is correctly defined the data types that we're looking to pull through. And obviously it's, it's also made our first row into our headers, which is great. So we don't need to do any transformations here. We can just continue to transform data. We can go ahead. And once this just loads, we can save and close. Excellent, that information will be pulled through into our new data flow. We're going to call this data flow. Um, let's call it um, bootcamp. This can be any, any, any name and convention of your choice. We're going to go ahead and save that. OK, now, as you notice, this splash screen um, will pop up. It will ask you to refresh now or set a refresh schedule. For the purposes of this demonstration, we're not going to do that. So we're just going to close that for the time being. OK, so we now have our data flow, which we can see identified here as bootcamp underscore ML. And we can see we have we have our first table with a table name being sales training. Now, before we move on, we want to add another table 
um, because as we saw before, we also want to pipe our new lead data through um, our machine learning model. So with that being said, again, we're going to use a text CSV data source. We're going to go back to the GitHub, just go back to our root directory. All the way back to our root. And then once we're at our root directory, we're going to go and get our perspective via the CSV in exactly the same manner that we did previously. By opening it, we're going to get the raw um, version, which gives us the URL that we require. OK, so we just go back over to Power BI and set our client gestion in exactly the same way using our file path URL. We're going to hit next. And once again, Power Query on the web will just show us a preview of the underlying data. Again, very key to mention here that all of our data types um, have been correctly defined and also our first row has been utilized as our headers, which means we don't need to do any transformations from this perspective. So we can go ahead and save and close. Excellent. So now that we're at this point, we have our sales training um, data ready and we also have our leads so our prospective buyer um, data ingested within our data flow again um, again if the splash screen does come up for you to refresh we're not going to do this at the moment we're going to move straight ahead and start to build out our machine learning model so how do we do this well let's go over to machine learning models so once we go over to our machine learning models, again, Power BI using uh, the premium auto ML functionality gives us a nice splash screen um, that will walk us through um, this process. So it asks us if we're new to machine learning models and it also identifies what we'll be doing. So as we follow this through, we can see first and foremost that we're going to create and train our model. So we're going to select our training data, choose a model type, then train our model before looking at ways that we can improve it and then finally, we can apply this model to our prospective buyer um, data. So let's get started. Excellent. So first and foremost, um, as we can see by the UI walkthrough, um, Power BI has asked us to select a column uh, that we want to predict. Um, so with that being the case, let's go ahead and choose our table. Now we know that we want to use our sales training data first and foremost. And the column that we want to base our prediction on is our buyer flag. So if you remember previously, our buyer flag is a, bo is a Boolean flag that shows whether um, somebody has purchased with us previously. So we can just go ahead and click next. Now, as we can see, our next step will be to choose a model. Now, Power BI in the service, um, again, um, is very clever here and it looks to choose a model on our behalf. So as we can see here, Power BI has correct, correctly identified this is going to be a binary prediction. OK, so as it mentions here, this is determining the likelihood of a sales lead to convert or the probability of a customer responding to a marketing campaign. As I mentioned, Power BI does uh, look to be clever here and automatically define uh, the type of model we're going to use. But if we didn't want to use that, we could go ahead at the top here and just select a different model. As we mentioned, we already have our binary prediction, uh, which is the, which is the uh, classification we're going to use in this instance. And we also can choose from a general classification, uh, which is distinguishing between free or more incomes. And examples of this, as we saw previously, is classifying credit card applicants into groups of those who have good good credit, bad credit, um, or those that we require for further analysis, and also regression. So regression is estimating the numeric value or estimating something like house prices in a market based on regional factors. Um, as I mentioned, those are out of the scope of our introductory session today, and we're going to be looking at using a binary prediction model. So with that being the case, we want to look to choose a target outcome. So we already know that we're going to predict against our buyer field. Now the target outcome that we're interested in here is whether or not this person is a buyer. So whether they're whether being a buyer is true. OK, so to match this our match label for this, we're going to change to be buyer. And if it doesn't match this, we're going to change our outcome to be not a buyer. 
OK, so once we've defined these, we can go ahead and click next. Excellent. Now, in this example, um, we're going to select the attributes or the data um, or more commonly known in machine learning as features and um, that we want to learn the sorry that we want to use to produce um, our accurate outcomes. Now, in this instance, again, with Power BI in the service um, trying to be uh, clever, it's already, it's already identified columns which potentially have a low correlation with buyer. So in this instance, um, having a low correlation is something that's not really going to give us um, any, more, any further information to get in an accurate outcome um, within our prediction for our machine learning model. But with that being said, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn some more of these or select some more of these just so just so we can go through and I can show you in a bit more detail throughout the session um, what this looks like. So let's go ahead and we're going to choose age, marital status, uh, gender, yearly income, total children, the number of children at home, uh, the education and the occupation. Um, and we'll just leave the number of cars owned out for now uh, and also we'll have postal code in there as well. So let's go ahead and select next. OK, let's call this our model name. Let's call it um, a boot camp. We're not going to add a description for now and what we can do in our training time. Now, this is very key. Obviously, we're going through this in a demonstration, so I'm going to lower the training time in an effort to have it trained while we're on the session. Um, but generally, for more accurate results, you would want to train the data um, for, for a longer period of time to allow it to iterate through the data and make the best possible predictions. Uh, as I mentioned, we are going to lower this down to the five minutes. Um, in an effort to obviously allow you to see this um, throughout the session. So I'm going to select save and train. OK, and then what you'll see is that in a similar way to how Power BI um, identifies that it's refreshing uh, data models and data sets, this will just go off um, and refresh in the background. Now, as I mentioned previously, this will take five minutes. Um, so with that being the case, I do have um, something that we've prepared already. Um, if not, then this is this is a logical point as well to stop for any questions there may be at the moment. Excellent. It doesn't allow any questions at the moment, so let's continue. All right. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and look into uh, look at one of our machine learning models that we prepared already. OK, so with that being the case, I've just gone over to my ML webinar deployed, uh, which, as you can see, has the two tables that we're looking at. And I'm just going to go into our machine learning models. Now, the reason that I've gone on to this previously um, created version um, is in an effort to get for everything today, as opposed to waiting the minimum five minute time um, for the machine learning model to go ahead and, and refresh there. OK, so if you were doing this and you were following along, once the machine learning model has refreshed, you'll be presented with this screen um, and you'll be able to go into here, which is our view training report. OK, so our machine learning model has gone away in the background um, it's done its iterations over the data. And then what happens is it generates us a report based on um, the, 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 the predictions that it's just gone away and defined. So I'm just going to walk you through um, this report in a bit more detail because it's very key. Some of the information that Power BI um, presents back to you here. So what we're going to see here first and foremost on the first tab is our model performance. OK, so it's going to tell us how the model was evaluated. So in this instance, um, the model it's predicted what would be a buyer based on probabilities for a test of 1563 records of the underlying data set and compared this based on predicted outcomes. OK, and um, the AUC for this model was 79%. Um, and again, I think that we won't go into too much detail on what an AUC is. We can go over that in a, in a more intermediate session as opposed to the introduction. Now, 
something that I wanted to go through here is seeing our top predictors. So you may well have remembered that I selected some additional columns that Power BI recommended them to me not to use because they were a low correlation. OK, so you'll see some of these columns here um, in terms of our top predictors by influence. So we can see that yearly income, total children, um, number of children at home, as Power BI previously suggested to me, have a low com correlation with what um, a buyer looks like to our business. The highest influence or the highest correlations um, to identify a buyer are with age, marital status and obviously with total children as well. Now, by selecting any of these um, of columns of data, we can drill down and understand in a bit more detail, as we can see here, the percentage of buy records for each feature value. OK, so as this is based on age, we can see that majority of buyers within our model are 46 or less, 46 to 59 and so on and so forth. Similarly, we can do the same for marital status. So of either uh, single or married, so our uh, what most likely to be a buyer for our company is a single person. And again, we can start to look at total children. So again, we can see that the majority of our buyers have total children of one. OK. Right, so let's just close that down. OK, so now going on again to quite a key feature um, within um, machine learning and, and building out models is precision and recall. So as we can see here in our grid, um, we're looking at whether Power BI successfully within this machine learning model predicted a buyer, which can be seen here. So in this column, uh, sorry, in this row here, we can see that of the predicted buyers, the actual buyers returned by this machine learning model was 704 and pred predicted buyers, which were not actual buyers, was 859. So quite a good prediction in terms of um, which buyers the machine learning model has correctly identified as actual buyers. OK, now if we just move across to our predicted not buyer column, we can see that this really hasn't performed well at all. So within our machine learning model, the predicted non buyers who were actual buyers was none, but the actual predicted non buyers that were actually not buyers is none also. So in this case, our machine learning model has not successfully identified any non buyers. OK, it's actually predicted that some of those would be um, uh, sorry, would, would, would be not buyers. So with that being the case, let's look at two values which are precision and recall. OK, so precision is the ratio between true positives and actual positives. So for our problem statement, um, this will probably measure um, the amount of buyers that would correctly be identified as buying. OK, the recall in this instance, so the one that we have here at 100% is the measure of correctly identifying true positives. So, for example, if we were to look at um, all patients which potentially sorry which actually have heart disease the recall would tell us how many of those were, were correctly identified as, as having heart disease so as we can see we have our little probability threshold here which will allow us to either increase the recall or increase the precision so what we can do after our model has successfully trained is we can just increase our precision slightly and see how this affects our numbers. So now we can see that predicted non buyers, the actual non buyers, has gone up to 61, whereas previously this machine learning model had not identified any. And again, if we go further towards um, increasing our precision, we can start to see that we're now correctly defining a lot more um, non buyers, but also we're now. Um, identifying less actual buyers um, as well. So what I would say is that obviously with any machine learning model, um, this takes a little bit of adjustment to 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 put together what is a good number for yourselves. Um, but generally, if you start around the 0 0.5 mark, um, it should give you a good balance of um, the predicted buyers, which are actual buyers, and also in this bottom row down here, predicted buyers, sorry, prediction, predicted non buyers who are actual non buyers as well. OK, and again, as we just move through um, the report, there's also something which is known as a cost of benefit analysis, which will allow you to change the population size of the data. 
um, being utilised to train on. Also looking at unit costs and unit benefits. Uh, and again, I think this escapes the, the focus of our introduction session, but it's just something to note it is available within this report. Now, as we move on to the next tab, which is our accuracy report, uh, we can start to see, if I just scroll up to the top, um, it goes into a bit more information around the accuracy of the, the model predictions. Also looking at the cumulative gains chart, the ROC curve, um, and then as we go through into these visuals here, we can see what the ideals are. So this is the green dotted line, so the ideal predictions based on the random guesses. Um, and also we can see how our model, which is the yellow line, uh, performed against both of those um, parameters. Moving forward onto our final tab, and again, we are moving through this at quite a pace as we do have quite a bit of information to cover in, in, in the time available today. So in our final tab, which is training details, um, again, we can start to look at how the model was trained. OK, so how Power BI used to use the automated ML um, capability within Azure machine, learn machine learning to train our model. So we can see how many rows were actually sampled from our training data. So in this instance, it was 7,293. And we can see how many of those rows were actually utilized for training. Now, if you remember, um, Power BI did mention to us that it would use 80% of our rows for training, which is our 5730 here. Um, it's also going to tell us how many iterations uh, were run against this data um, to, to use to predict. And also it's going to tell us our final uh, model being used, which in this instance was a pre-fitted soft voting classifier. So here we can see um, a bit of a bit of performance detail around the iteration the iterations um, through our data. So if you remember in our first slide when we introduced what is machine learning, we said that we were going to allow the machine to learn directly from data. So in every iteration here, um, our model is going through to identify which attributes, which features um, are defining a bias. So with every iteration, it's getting better and better and better, which is why in the future you may want to use more than five minutes um, to train your model. OK, and then we're just going to go into a bit more detail here. It will tell us what uh, what our features we were using, so which attributes uh, which we defined earlier, the detected column type um, and any imputation that was based around that. Um, and then again, we're just going to some final parameters that the model selected. Um, again, a bit more information in terms of which machine learning model was used and why. Um, but something you can play around with again in the future. So if you are following this through, uh, once you've gone through your training report, this means that you're now in a position to apply your model. Now to do this, you would just go ahead and, sele and select this button, um, which would return you back to our Power BI workspace. Again, in an effort um, to protect time um, and not redeploy that, I'm just going to show you after you have um, done that screen what that would look like. OK, so we're just going to press here. Don't want to retrain. Gonna have to. OK, OK, so we are going to have to apply that as, as part of um, this deployment. So we may have a few minutes of downtime here. So once you do go ahead and do you're happy with your model and you do want to apply this information, um, what you're going to look to do is use your prospective buyer table. So if you just imagine with where we are currently, we've gone ahead, we've looked at our historical um, buyer information, which we've defined as sales training. We've gone through and we've created a machine learning model within that data to correctly identify um, of those buyers, which attributes will define a buyer for us. And we've saved our, our machine learning model, which is great. Um, but what we want to do is obviously apply that to new data, new leads being brought through so we can try to identify what a good lead, what a buyer looks like to us without having to continue to call them. So obviously we need to look at our prospective buyer table now as our input table. OK, in this instance, we would create a new column, which would become our output column. And we've already defined that our threshold would be 0 0.5. So you would go ahead and save and apply that. Now, once you've saved and applied that, you can go back to tables and we would now have some new tables available to us. OK, so we'd have our buyer prediction training data 
So this is the data that we utilize to train. We would have our bio prediction testing data. So this is the 80% that was used to, to test. Um, and we would then have our prospective buyer enriched data and our prospective buyer um, explanations. And these are the two tables that we're interested in now. So if we just go ahead over to Power BI Desktop, we're going to open a new report. And just once this opens, we're going to look to create a connection to our newly defined data flows. So let's go to get data. OK, and we're just going to look for a data flow. Let's go to Power BI data flows and we're going to connect. OK, so once we choose connect, this is going to point directly towards our workstation, uh, sorry, our workspace within the Power BI service. And we know that in this instance, I was utilizing Sandbox. Um, and again, we're going to use our previously deployed um, version of the model because this has run through all of the five minutes of training. And we've already defined this against our new model in an effort to um, save time. As I mentioned, we're looking at bio prediction and we also have the explanations. OK, so let's go ahead and select both of those. And again, let's look to transform data. OK, so once we've done that, we'll be presented um, with our Power Query screen. And you'll notice that, first of all, let's look at our prediction explanations. So we wouldn't really use this from a reporting perspective. I'm just going to run through briefly what the explanations are. So the explanations is and does exactly what it says on the tin. Um, it gives you a list of, of or a table of underlying data, which shows you the prediction outcome uh, based on which fields, um, the field types, any contribution, the values behind that and any explanations that go with that as text. So it gives you an explanation of why the model has predicted the outcome um, for each of these fields. Um, as I mentioned, we wouldn't utilize that from a reporting perspective. And what we're really interested in here is the um, prospective buyer enriched buyer prediction. So I'll just go over here. And what we've noticed here is this is our lead data, right? So if you remember from our GitHub, um, this is the information that we've received, which was previously not defined on whether um, the individuals would be a buyer or not. So we have our transactional keys, um, we have our first name, last name, all of our features and attributes. Um, but before we ran the machine learning model, we didn't have these additional columns, okay? So this is our buyer prediction, the outcome the buyer prediction score. So in here, this is um, the score based on how likely um, the outcomes are to be either true or false. And then we also have um, the prediction explanation uh, that we just looked at in, in the previous table and the explanation index, okay? Again, generally for reporting purposes, we wouldn't need to bring these two columns through. What we're really interested in, in here is our prediction outcome and the scores. OK, so let's just go ahead and just close and apply that. And hopefully these changes will run through relatively quickly and the demo gods will be kind to us for this session. And then with that being the case, we can now see within our fields pane, if we just close our visualization, and we have our buyer prediction and we can look at some of our some of our buyers, for example, if we would if we were trying to build out um, a bucket of leads. For our salespeople to call, we could just use our first and last name um, of these individuals. And then if we just look for our buyer prediction, we can look at the outcome and we can also look at sorry, not the explanation the score. So this becomes really powerful, right? So now if I just go over and I'm just going to create a rudimentary um, slicer based on the outcome. OK, um, I'm just going to select true. Now I have a, a list of all of the sales leads that have come through that our machine learning model has predicted would 
likely be buyers in the future. OK, we've done this using Power BI Premium or Premium per user, um, and this can be massively um, cost effective for your organization in terms of um, saving. We noticed that we were spending three million pounds per year um, on, on buying leads. So wouldn't it be great if we could identify upfront um, which leads we actually need and spend three million on targeted leads that actually have a higher chance of, of converting. Um, and again, similarly, if we wanted to, we could filter out um, all of those again or, or, or show all of those which have a low um, likelihood of, of actually being buyers. And again, obviously, we can just sort this um, against the score. So if we wanted to at the beginning of the month, we could have our highest scoring likely buyers um, at the top and just work our way um, through this list. So that's how we've looked at utilizing uh, Power BI premium or premium per user to correctly define a uh, binary prediction, identify buyers and sellers, uh, sorry, and buyers and purchasers um, within, our, within our model. So I'll just get us back to where we were within um, our session. So we've looked at how we can do that. Now, let's look at how we can do that for free uh, within Power BI. So those of you who are familiar uh, with Power BI know that Power BI Premium and PPU um, come with a license cost, um, as does Pro. So with that being said, wouldn't it be great if we could utilize um, freely available technologies to get to the same end result within Power BI? So what we're going to do, um, as our slide defines here, is we're going to, again, make the machines learn. Um, and obviously, as part of this webinar, no machines were harmed in the making of this session. OK, so to do this, we need to start to look at some alternative tools outside of Power BI. Now, what I'm going to utilize in this session is going to be Python, and we're going to use um, um, an open source individual edition of the Anaconda distribution and to start to look how we can use Python for data science and machine learning on a single machine. Um, the link to get Anaconda um, is readily available and I'll make it available after this session. Um, and we're also going to use a module uh, machine learning library uh, within Python called PyCarrot um, by, again, an open source library uh, by a gentleman called Moez Ali, uh, which we're going to use to identify and define the machine learning um, for free. OK, so with that being said, let's go back to our demo. As I mentioned, um, you can go ahead and download. Um, so let's just go to the Anaconda website so I can show you um, where that information is. OK, so you just go ahead over to anaconda.com. Um, you would go ahead and download the individual um, edition for free and install that. Um, also, it's probably worthwhile noting that in some instances you will need to go to the Microsoft website and download and install the Microsoft C++ build tools as well. So I will, again, I will make sure all of these um, URLs are available following this session. So once you've downloaded Anaconda, the individual's individual edition, and also the Microsoft uh, C++ build tools, we're then in a position to start. So to do this, let's just go ahead and search for Anaconda, which is already pre-installed in this machine. And we're just going to open up the Anaconda command prompt. OK, and um, with that being the case, we can then go presented with our base environment. OK, so we've launched our Anaconda command prompt. We're in our base environment. We're going to activate what's called a new environment. OK, so this is going to be uh, the environment that we're going to use to perform our data science or machine learning um, for free. OK, so to do this, we're going to use a keyboard command, which is activate. And in this example, I'm going to define this environment as user group. So data science underscore user group. Now, this environment is already set up on this machine, so I'm just going to hit enter. Um, if it wasn't set up on your machine and it would just go through a couple of um, processes before moving you into, as you can see here, your data science underscore user group environment. Fantastic. So we are now in our new environment. Let's go ahead and install um, the tools that we need to be able to um, perform our machine learning model. So let's go to using Conda. We're going to install the PIP library. Now, once again, 
PIP is already installed on this machine. Uh, so this should run through relatively quickly. If you don't have this installed in your environment on your machine, um, then this will take just a few moments to and to run through, but as you can see here, all of the requested packages are already installed on this machine. And then once we have pip, we can use it by using pip install and putting in PyCarrot. As we mentioned previously, PyCarrot is the open source um, machine learning module that we're going to utilize within Power BI um, to, to build our binary prediction. Once again, it is already installed um, on this machine, so it's run through relatively quickly. Um, but in your case, if it is new, then you will be um, installing these tools. So once that's done, we're in a position to move back over to Power BI. OK, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start a new um, Power BI desktop file. And I'm very conscious that we're getting towards, um, we're going to be just, just in time and I would like to leave a bit of time at the end for questions. So we are going to look to fly through this um, as quickly as possible. So once you have um, a new Power BI desktop file open, we can just close our wizard window. Because what we need to do is allow Power BI to understand that we've installed our Python environment and it needs to have access to that. So to do that, we go to File, Options and Settings, over to Options. And then we'll be presented with a splash screen where we want to go to Python scripting. OK, now within Python scripting, we want to go to an other directory and we want to go to our Anaconda install into our environment and browse for the environment which we've created, which in this example is data science underscore UG. Excuse me. So once, um, once we've um, set our Python home directory and made Power BI aware of it, we can go ahead and click OK. And then we're in a position to start utilizing um, the Python within our Power BI environment for free. So let's go ahead and very similar to how we did on the Power BI um, service earlier, we're going to go and get data. OK, um, so we can bring in our machine learning sales training data and also so that we can bring in our prospective buyers, our lead list. Now, slightly different here is we need to utilize um, the web data source as opposed to the text CSV when we're using Power BI desktop. OK, so with that being said, we're just going to go back to our GitHub repo. And in the same way that we did previously, let's go back to our root directory. Okay, let's just jump back just one more. Pressed it too many times there, over eager. <laughs> okay, and we're going to go to our sales training CSV. Uh, again, in a very in the very same way as we did previously, we're going to go to the raw version of that CSV get the URL and we're going to place that connector. Excellent. Um, again, Power BI will load a preview of this data. Now we can see that it, 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 in this instance, uh, Power BI desktop has not clearly defined that we have our first row as headers. As you can see here, we have column one, two, three, four, etc. So we do have to make some transformations to our underlying data. So with that being the case, we're just going to go over here in Power Query, use our first row as headers. And then again, we've also can see that all of the data types have been incorrectly um, uh, detected here. So we're just going to go, sorry, go through and select our columns, which we need to change to be a numeric data type. Okay, so let's transform. Actually, let's just do it here. Let's do it here. Sorry, data type. Let's go into text and we're going to go to whole number. Um, and then we can go ahead and let's go for a new source. Go to web. 
and again just going to go back to our github repo and then we're going to go and get our um, prospective buyer uh, data as well okay so just wait for that to load all right so let's go and get our prospective buyer csv again we're going to go and get the raw data grab our url straight back over to Power BI. We're going to put our URL within our from the web connector. And here again, we can see that we need to make our first row as headers. So we can go ahead and do that. Um, and again, in terms of our underlying data, Power Query in Power BI desktop has not correctly defined our data types. So let's go ahead and just do that. apologize for the pace of today's session but we are covering quite a lot of information um, or trying to get through and show you as much as possible within a short space of time so if there are any questions outside of today's session and please do feel free to um, to reach out okay so we now have our sales training and prospective buyer data um, available for us within power bi and um, that's great so what we need to do is go ahead and start looking at how we can um, first and foremost create a machine learning model on our sales training data and to do that we want to go ahead and transform our data using a python script okay excellent now power bi is going to allow me to run a python script using our previously defined environment so luckily for us within our github repo I've already put together some scripts that will allow us to build out our machine learning model and then pipe our data through it um, on our prospective buyers also. Now, the first one we want to use is the one that's um, that's named uh, one. We're going to impute our data set for, um, for ML. So with this, we can go ahead and get the raw again and we can just copy. And bring this over to the desktop file. Paste our information in. Again, without getting too technical in terms of what the, the Python script is doing, um, that would be saved for a more advanced session. Um, once we have run the Python script, um, we can go ahead and click continue. In this instance, we're not too concerned about privacy levels as part of this um, demonstration session. So I'm just going to go ahead and click save. Now that Python script will run on the data and we're just going to see again it does run relatively quickly uh, normally but obviously uh, with the constraints of, of presenting etc this may take a few moments and if it does I'll just move on to um, a previously prepared version of this. Excellent. So we now have um, that Python script has now has now run and it's presented us with three tables or data frames off the back of the, uh, the the Python script that we've run. So in this instance, we want to look at our imputed table and expand that. OK, so we're just going to click expand. And this should just take a couple of moments. Excellent. So what we've done within that script is we've just run all of our data through and you'll notice that some of our data types uh, have changed to now become um, so our data types actually become strings, but the underlying data has been converted um, or imputed, if you will. Um, and mapped to identifiers. So the best way that I can um, describe this to you is is here utilizing gender. So previously we had male and female as gender. Um, now we have 1.0 and 0, 0.0, .0 uh, which are defining both of these two categories um, as, as, a, as a mapping. So we have to do this. We have to transform this data to allow us to be able to run our machine learning model against these attributes and these features. So once we've done that, we can go ahead and run another Python script. And again, you can just come over to our GitHub repo. We're going to go to train our data set for ML. Um, in this instance, just going to look at the raw 
um, for this data. Now, what we're going to do with this Python, this Python script is run through exactly the same binary prediction that we did previously on AutoML. We're just doing a scripted version of this now um, because obviously um, the AutoML, so Azure Machine Learning, um, oh, sorry, Azure Auto Machine Learning is a premium feature this functionality for free and as you can see here we're going to also um, uh, the, the, our final testing data set we're going to push out as a sales model CSV and we're also going to save this model into something called a pickle file now again without going into too much detail a pickle file um, is going to be utilized as a saved version of our machine learning model which we're going to utilize to push our perspective by a data set um, through and obviously define what a buyer does look like to us and what it doesn't. So we're just going to go ahead and run the next script. Now, as always is the case with, with Power Query, um, do please do obviously correctly name your applied steps that we're running through here. Um, as as you as you do run through them, just so that people it's easier for people to follow moving forward. Now, again, this may take a few moments, and if it does, we can move on to a previously deployed data set, as again, I'm aware that we're getting quite close to time. Okay, as that is the case, let me just jump along um, to our demo version. Just going to jump back to exactly the same position where we were within our applied steps. And then we're going to have a little race to see which one returns first. So in this instance, this one has returned first. So we've just run our, our Python script and we're, we're presented with two data frames here, one being a data set and the other one being predictions. Now we're interested in predictions and sorry, I just go ahead because we already had that step in place. Now in our predictions, um, Sorry, let me just run that back and actually do it on our sales training as opposed to our predicted. So, sorry, where we were, we were, we were here. So we just run our Python script and we just um, were looking for the return of this. Now, this does give us a few data frames. So just remember that every data frame that you have within your Python script will be returned to you at the end of, um, of running that script. We're only interested in predictions here, okay? So we'll go ahead and um, go to our next step having selected predictions and then we'll be returned our final data set as such okay so in this instance within power bi desktop we have two new columns okay and you'll remember from auto ml that we also had additional columns that were presented to us after running our machine learning model in this instance we have our predicted label and the score so again whether this is going to be a buyer or not and the score against that. So in this instance, we have our model, it's trained um, and it's ready to go for us to start piping some data through. Now, again, sticking to our pre-deployed version um, in an effort for time, we're looking at our prospective buyers now. So this is our leads and we're gonna go ahead and pick it up from where we were previously. So we just promoted our headers and we're now going to go and run a Python script. So in this instance, just going to open up our Python script. Now, what you would do is you would go ahead over to our repo. So we would go ahead over to our repo. And now we're going to look to use our third script which is imputing our new data set for prediction. Now you would remember um, that, we're, that we need to encode some of our data and impute it ready to run the model um, on this. So you just copy this script out, come back into Power BI, into your Power Query, paste that in and hit OK. In this instance, we're gonna cancel because we've already run that data. And again, very similarly to the first data set, you would open up and expand the imputed table, which would present you with again, you could notice here that our values have all changed um, and we've encoded them as mappings. Um, so you would be able to see that as your new version, ready to now run this through our previously created um, machine learning model. 
So again, what we would do here is just go back to our GitHub again, and you'd finally pull in the fourth Python script, okay, which is pipe data set for training. Now this is the smallest of scripts, but it does the, <laughs> um, arguably um, the best bit. So we would copy this out, head back over to Power BI, and as you can see here, we're just going to utilize, you, you may remember I mentioned the pickle file, which we saved as our object, and we're gonna load this data through that, that that machine learning model to get back our predictions. So once we've done that, we'll be presented with um, our power query and to open up our table, which in this instance is predictions. And our predictions will return us our finalized data set. OK, so this is our leads with our two new columns. OK, so our prospective buyer leads with a label and a score correctly defined and mapped against them. OK, so once you're in that position, you can just close and apply um, and then you'll be back within your Power BI desktop window. Just jump back with your newly trained um, prospective buyer list. Now, in this instance, if we do very, very much the same as what we did previously, which is get our first name and our last name, then bear in mind that using this technique at the moment, our first and last name are still encoded. OK, so we're going to be returned encoded values of that at the moment. Um, and we're going to go and get our score. And our. What's the column where is prospected by. I'm looking for value. Oh, sorry, label. OK, perfect. So in this instance, we now have and I'll just bring this so you can see it better. So we have our first name, last name, our score and our label. And again, very much similar to how we did on uh, the Power BI service. We can take our label as a filter and just find the ones that have been uh, the, the leads that have been run through our machine learning model and identified as potential buyers. And obviously, again, we can do exactly the same and list those. By the score. I'm just going to do it here so we can sort these um, by the score. OK, so we can start to see that the highest scoring ones are now listed at the top. And alternatively, we could also show um, the, the ones that we that are predicted not as to be not buyers as well, fully for free. So apologies, we've run through that quite quickly. I'll just get to the end of our slides. Excellent, we've made the machines learn. We've installed Anaconda and PyCarrot. Okay. So now we have a vision and here's how we can take it to our next level. So we've, we've looked at binary prediction uh, within Power BI Premium, Premium per user, and also how to do this for free. We could also look at, user, look at utilizing some outlier detection, topic distribution, um, and association rule mining results as well. Um, so there's some more resources to take away. So my good friend and fellow MVP, Luca Zavarella, has, has done a fantastic book that looks at extending Power BI with Python and R. Um, there's also readily available information on KD Nuggets towards data science. And as I've mentioned, you can utilize the Anaconda build and also look at how to build out self-service models in the Microsoft documentation. So again, thank you very much. I know we've got to time, um, but happy to take any questions now or offline.